guys, you're watching 1700 on channel 31 with Eliza and Nat. And right now we are very lucky to join by the wonderful Hannah Crofts to introduce her brand new music moniker, Baby Velvet. Welcome to the show, Hannah. It's so nice to have Thank you. you. <laughs> Welcome to my bedroom. Very crazy. So, <laughs> so Baby Velvet is described as a vintage loving wanderer on a mission to find out if you do always get what you deserve in life and in love. So can you introduce us to Baby Velvet and tell us the journey of how it came to be? Um, so I've been a musician for 15 years and I play in a band called All Our Exes Live in Texas. And I was in that band, well, still in that band for the last seven years. And we toured for almost that entire time. I think we did 200 shows a year, something ridiculous. And then uh, about two years ago, we decided to come home and stop touring for a bit, at, which was really bizarre because after seven years of having my identity built around touring all the time I was suddenly just in the one spot and uh decided to make a solo record so I spent all of 2019 writing the record and then 2020 recording the record and now releasing the record so it's been a bit of a journey to get here I've never done anything solo before I've never put the Call Me is my first single that I've ever put out by myself. So it's been very scary, but also really hopefully exciting and fun. And I don't know. Yeah, it's it's been interesting. It's also interesting to do it in a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it'd be very, very interesting to produce and kind of put that together. And I was listening to the music yesterday and with your obviously um, on your previous band, you've toured with some amazing acts like Backstreet Boys, Minoils and Vocals and Kesha. And do you think that they had a particular influence and the way that the creation of your music has happened and how it's changed from your previous band's work? Um, I think the touring part of it, and especially meeting musicians like the Backstreet Boys and Midnight Oil, and um, is that they're all the hardest working people you've ever met. Like, I think that it really drove home that if you want to be, because you know, I guess there's different ways of being a musician, but I'm a tour dog at heart and I want to release music so that I can continue to tour the world and perform. And to do that, you have to be, you have to do like, Black Street Boys do four shows a day or something ridiculous. Like they, I don't even think they sleep. After they do their show, they do a um, after party and they host a party and people can come and meet them. And then they sleep for like four hours and then they get up and do a whole bunch of other shows. So I think, the influence of touring was like you've got to you've just got to work like a dog like there's talent and there's creativity and that's half of the coin but then the other half is like just the absolute sheer I'm just like powering through working so I think that's really influenced my uh, approach to just music and working on the other side of being creative um but then also just seeing people be beautiful musicians together like that's a huge part of this and there's um been really inspiring those seven years were really inspiring to see to, to play with those women and to see musicians yeah it sounds like a lot of work so yeah kind of don't really think about yeah how much time it takes up you just sort of see the stage and go wow that's exciting so <laughs> everyone's hearing about your new single call me um in which you explain is the tapping in and out of life so what can you tell us about the process of creating it and sort of where the idea for that came from that song for me is really about having depression of coming off tour and stopping touring and breaking up with my partner at the time. And uh, I feel like it was my Saturn Returns year, like it was everything in my life changed all in once. And having to have depression and a loss of a sense of who you are, but then still having to communicate all the time. I find that really hard that when you're really depressed, people still put a lot of pressure on you to behave in a certain way or talk when you don't want to talk. And cause I don't know when I get depression, I just shut down and I, and I need that recovery time. And then I need to process it and then come back and say, okay, cool. Like I've done that or, you know, I've kind of worked through some of that stuff. So that's where the song came from. And then I took it to my producer, Kevin, and I was supposed to move to Los Angeles last year, but then COVID. So Kevin and I actually made the whole album on Zoom. So we did three weeks straight of us on Zoom every day. And uh, I have never recorded myself before, but I bought a whole professional setup. And then I just sat in my room and recorded all of my, learned how to use Logic, um, like just recorded all of my parts and all of my tracks. And then I'd send it to him and then we'd sit on Zoom and he'd get on the drums and play a drum part. And we just did that for weeks and weeks. 
which was really like an amazing way to make a record. Like I'm really lucky that I got to still do it with him. But um, yeah, that's kind of how Call Me came about was just sending it back and forth. Yeah, it's super, super interesting. And I know that with your new debut album and your solo album, it'll feature songs like What the Hell's Wrong With Me, Normal People, Best In Show, and of course, Call Me. So is there a connection between those songs and how, you know, the songwriting process and how did that all come about? I think it's funny when I look back on the record because there's 10 songs on the record and eight of them are about different um, men that I've dated, but none of them are about the same person. <laughs> so I was like, it's not, there's not a through line of like a relationship. It's just generally dating. Dating. <laughs> and then <laughs> dating. I think the themes of the record are dating, being really poor and um, having depression. So they're not the most uplifting themes, but I have one song on the record that I wrote last that's um, about how much I love women and I love women in my life because I got to the writing the record and I hadn't written that song by the time I was recording and Kevin my producer was like you're such a feminist and all these songs are about men and I don't know why you're dedicating so much time like so much air time to these men and I was like oh yeah why am I doing that so then me and him wrote a song together that's not about men and it's about women and I that'll be a single at some point I think I really love that song but it was a funny thing to look back on I love that yeah looking forward to hearing <laughs> it so we've just heard a bit about um how your new single came together and a bit more about the album so without further ado let's give it a spin right now so this is Call Me by v- Baby Velvet and you're watching 1700 <laughs> Hey guys, we're back with Hannah, aka Baby Velvet, and we're just chatting about the release of her brand new single, Call Me, and her debut solo album that will be released next year. So the music video for Call Me, which you've just seen, is out now, which I think is a rebellious Thelma and Louise type boss lady clip. So what was the process of creating the music video? Um, The initial thought for the video was that I would get six women in their 70s to dig a hole and bury me alive (laughs) um (laughs) that was the (laughs) the starting process and I took that to cool studios the production team um uh, there's a guy there called Toby and he was like why don't we just actually incorporate older women in the clip but they don't have to kill you (laughs) um (laughs) And maybe we could do some kind of road journey because I think for him, what inspired when he heard the song, he was like, the whole song is like a, a journey of giving everything up and letting everything go and starting again. And so that really evoked getting in a car and just leaving. Um, but then we did want to include women over a certain age as well. So c- kept like, yeah, talking about that idea and came to the Thelma and Louise, but Thelma and Louise with a good ending like that they would live and they would have a wonderful life full of diamonds and rubies and vintage clothes. Um, And then Toby brought on Tom and Katie, who were the directors of the clip. um, And the three of us, the four of us worked together for like six weeks maybe. And it was very touch and go of whether we got to do it because it was in the in-between lockdown. So we went into lockdown and then we had two weeks until we were filming and we were like, we're going to have to postpone, we're going to have to postpone. And then we just pushed forward and we got out of lockdown the day before and then we went away and we did the clip for three days and I reckon within two weeks we were back in lockdown. So we were so lucky to have gotten to do it. And, like, my stylist lives in Sydney and she came down and, like, the next day she went into lockdown. Like, we were very, very lucky. Maybe it was, like, the universe saying this is the exact time that you have to do it. (laughs) This wouldn't have happened otherwise. Like, it's for, like... Like I just, we would have had to reschedule and there was a, it was a 15 person shoot in total and just organizing that many people just, we'd never, it never would have happened the same. Um, so oh, you that's the hat from the clip. Oh my God, I see that. That's so oh, cool. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> that's um, Brad Pitt's hat right there. There we go, got it. <laughs> you do have also single launches coming in Melbourne and Sydney. What can we expect mm-hmm. from the... Well, what can the audience expect from these single launches? What can we, you know, entail? Well, I just changed my Melbourne date from September to November. So hopefully we can expect them to happen. That's my dream (laughs) that I get to do the show. Um, I have been playing with a new band now. There's six people in the band and they're all the most amazing musicians I've ever gotten to play with. They're people I've known for a really long time, um, but 
they're all session musos who play in bands and are just amazing at what they do. And I think we've like Olivia from a band called OPEP is in my band and um, James Gilligan, who's in Angus and Julia Stone's band. And like, they're just a really amazing group of people. And we're all froth into play. We've had so many rehearsals <laughs> without being able to do gigs that I think mostly the shows will be us just so happy to be there. Like just given, given just love because we're so pumped to be able to play some music again. I think it's such a different experience when in comparisons like virtual to when you're actually with an audience and you're in the actual environment. I think the okay. energy and the vibe is completely different. So yeah, I understand. <laughs> Just to, I don't know about you guys, but I really miss hearing amplified music. Like I want to hear someone sing into yeah. a microphone. I yeah. want to hear a guitar for an amp. And I'm really, I miss that part of it. Yeah, yeah. even just enjoying music with other people, not just by yourself yeah. in your room. I'd love to do that. I'd so how do you think, that. yeah. <laughs> how do you think the experience of touring like as a solo artist will be different compared to when you were with All Out My Access or in Texas? Do you think it will be different or are there things that you'd like to change yeah. up, do you think? um yes well yes and no like the things that were the that were no fun the, the stuff that's crap on tour and was crap with exes just comes down to money really because when you t- like we toured America for eight weeks straight and we did a show a night for that whole time which was absolutely incredible but you're also driving your own car and basically sleeping in one bed with four people because you can't you can't afford anything else so that stuff is like when I think about baby velvet touring, I'm like, how nice would that be? But I'm not going to, like, that'll still be the same. That'll still be like couch surfing and that's just how it is. Um, I think maybe what would be different is I'm better at, um, this is so boring. This is just like me in my 30s, but I'm better at being like, <laughs> dude can't get trashed every night oh no sorry I'm taking that out of this but like you you have to like eat properly and sleep well and health. I wouldn't have done it <laughs> you've got to have health to be able to keep going definitely that's a boring answer but like brushing <laughs> going to answer. Bed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um yeah so obviously you recently signed up with ABC Music and you have plenty of um exciting things happening so first of all what do you have planned and how can we keep up with all your exciting music plan? Where can we find you on social media? Um, I'm Baby Velvet Music everywhere. So Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and my website is babyvelvetmusic.com. Um, I have made a lot of lockdown art, which might sound boring, but like I've made, so I've made like a zine and Ooh, I so cool. page is a different um, song on my record that I've put together. Here's some we've prepared earlier. <laughs> I know, I'm like, what? <laughs> this is all I do in my bedroom, but I made a songbook where I put all of the um, songs so you can play play them on the piano. Ooh, cool. Um, and I've made a couple of video clips myself and I just sit alone in my room thinking about what I can create while we're in this lockdown period. Um, and so hopefully I'll put some more stuff out this year. Next year the record will come out and I will get to tour. Fingers crossed. Yeah, awesome. that's the plan. That's the grand plan. Well, thank you so much, Hannah, for joining us today. We're really so excited to discover more about Baby Velvet. You seem it's so interesting, and I really love the music. Um, so guys, if you like Nana and can't wait to see Baby Velvet, Baby Velvet in action, make sure you check out all on her social media and to head to her single launches in either Melbourne or Sydney.